It's a final from Seoul, South Korea. The Dodgers open the season winning 5-2 over the Padres. Carl Ravitch and Eduardo Perez were on the call for the mothership, and they join us now from South Korea. Ravi, Eduardo, thanks for joining us. Uh, Ravi, let me start with you. Uh, the crowd felt almost like a soccer crowd there. How would you describe maybe the difference in how they see baseball there and how we see it here? Uh, it's interactive, Dan, and it's good to see you. It's interactive. Um, they, they're involved with not only, I think, the play on the field. They're very involved with the cheerleaders. Whatever's going on in front of them, they're kind of participating with. In between innings, so this is a thing now in all of sports venues, like when the half inning ends, the lights go out. Like The lights go out and darkness descends, and everybody's got these wristbands with different color lights on. So when there's no action on the field and we're in a commercial – they're all very active. So I, to me, this is one of those participation type. You get a trophy. You come in, you get a trophy because <laughs> you're participating and everybody everybody is doing it. That, that to me, is the biggest difference. And to your point, that, that's what soccer is. They, they all get involved. And it's not just because there's a great corner kick or a header. It's because they're at the event. What do you make of that, though, as a former player, Eduardo? Um, I think it's interesting, plus the lights. On and off, we've seen it already through Major League Baseball, but here they took it to another level. We had a concert, 10-minute concert, before from one of the K-pop uh, groups, and uh, it's just a really interesting dynamic that people understand that they're going to see a show, not just a baseball game, and they've done it for years. This goes on from the 80s on, and this is part of their baseball culture. And I remember when we were doing the KBO, they had told us just – I wish you guys could see it with the full, with the full stands. The way that they take their baseball serious, but at the same time, they know they're going to have a good time as a fan base. We see Otani's impact over here, Ravi, but seeing it firsthand over there, how do you describe it? Yeah, I, I think that people have said it here. We all have witnessed Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. That's what Otani is. Um, and that's who Mamiko is now. Like she's she's Travis Kelsey. She's she's the other partner in this. And she's I don't know. We must have shown her four or five times on the world feed. And she's sitting there, kind of cheering like this. She's not as into it as as Taylor was when Travis made a play. But she's she she will be. I can guarantee that. Yeah, and that's what it's like. Uh, you know, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Dave Roberts. Roberts had Barry Bonds. He's never seen. The, the, anything like this, the attention paid to them. Um, it, it's hard to describe. You know the Japanese media. Like, apparently, Shohei Otani, press conference, he leaves. Mookie and Freddie are sitting there. Everybody's leaving. They, they're like, hello, I'm, I'm, we're here. We're, wait a minute. Just because he left the room, uh, what about us? In a lot of ways, you know, when we were at ESPN in the late 90s, Tiger Woods. Oh, I think we lost them. Oh, he had that great Tiger Woods line, too. I know. And yeah, we'll see if we can get Ravi and uh, Eduardo back. They're joining us from uh, Seoul, South Korea. Yes, Paulie. You're right about the crowd. When we're watching it, it felt like there was chants that were organized and they were doing things in the crowd that felt that it almost like, you know, when you watch those Southern college football games and there's chants going on, or definitely soccer where the chants are very organized and team by team. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a full-on experience when you watch this game or you go to a game like this because the crowd is into it, and soccer is that way. Soccer, a chant will just start. You know, we usually wait for the – well, we're conditioned to wait for the action. Over there, they don't wait. They create the action themselves. And I was wondering this, who has more pressure on them, Shohei Otani or the Dodgers? Because can you separate the two? Because mm. Otani, with what he's getting paid, what we expect out of him, and then the Dodgers. Like, it's World Series or bust. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, Dave Roberts, I, the manager of the Dodgers, I, I think it's World Series victory or bust. Mm. Like, it's not even, it's not even yeah. appearance. And, 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 you know, he, he's got the, you know, the, probably the best team of all time on, on paper as far as, like, spending. And there's almost no excuses. Yeah, but I wonder about Otani. I don't. I don't know how he uh, compartmentalizes pressure. He doesn't look like it, it affects him. Whereas sometimes we'll watch guys that they get a little tighter there. He starts the season and the pressure is really high. 
Because now we're going, okay, that guy's getting paid $800 million. Let me see. And he's coming off surgery as well. Yeah, Seaton. Is that pressure on Otani specifically then coming from the money that he signed for or from uh, just being the face of baseball right now? Where do you think that's coming from? Well, I think it's going to come from the media. That we're going to go, okay, I think the over-under for home runs for him is maybe 39. I got, I don't know what kind of numbers to expect. He's not going to be pitching. Now we might be going, will there be more offensive numbers? But, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. At least it feels like there's a lot of pressure. It's almost like he's carrying the game. And you're going to tune in. That's why I was surprised that baseball opened up over there. Could you have played spring training games over there and still had – the debut of Otani for, you know, regular season at Dodger Stadium. That was my thought. And look, I, I understand we're trying to grow the game. We still have to grow the game here in the United States or regrow the game in the United States. You could have two spring training games over there and still accomplish that. At least that's what I feel like. Uh, Ravi and uh, Eduardo, can you guys, can you guys hear me? Uh, Eduardo, you were shaking your head. Were you shaking your head at what I was talking about? Yeah, I totally disagree with you on that one, uh, Dan, with all respect, because I think when the games matter, the players take it even more serious. They're at bats, their focus of concentration, and, and the players go. Uh, we're going to see uh, the Yankees go right now to, uh, to Mexico to play the Diablos. Not the entire squad is going. It's a split squad. It's it's a show, but it's not a game. And to be able to see games having been played in London and Monterey and Puerto Rico, uh, games that matter in Japan, and next year it'll be in Japan as well, I think those games that matter are important to the players and to the fan bases and to Major League Baseball and to the brand of the players. I think it's important, and they're aware of that uh, as well. What do you think, Ravi, exporting uh, opening day? I, you know, it's, I think the opening day part of it, it's, it's, it becomes a logistical issue. Like, you can't, you can't go to South Korea in the middle of the season and continue the season for sure. Just to get back to the Otani thing, because you asked about the impact, et cetera. Being here in Korea, I don't think grows the game for Korean fans or Japanese fans, because Otani has already done that. Otani's presence last year with the Angels, Otani's presence with the Dodgers, his popularity in that country, maybe because he's with the Dodgers, has grown. But whether he's playing here or playing over there, to your point and the point we were making, it is so huge and so massive that this particular game, you know, it may grow some fans the same way that us doing the KBO grew it in our country. It was niche, but there were people who wanted want to watch more KBO baseball, it's not going to change exponentially, but I don't, I don't think they're interested in that. And about growing the game in our country, in a lot of ways, things like the Little League World Series Classic does that. I mean, that definitely helps with the younger crowd. There's no doubt about it. And it exposes and puts the players in a position to humanize them. And, and you've watched that. When those guys roll into Williamsport and interact with the kids, they humanize them. I think a lot of ways these events humanize the player. You see them in different cultures, you see them in different environments, and, and that's how I think you grow the game. Uh, they're, they're real people. Eduardo, I'll leave you with this. Can you remember a player with what I'm perceiving as this much pressure on them to start a season? Uh, to be straight up with you, maybe, no. Uh, Hank Aaron, when he had to hit a, that, that, that home run to start the season, uh, but but no. The, what Shohei Otani is going through right now, I think it's a blessing that he's just a designated hitter and he can focus on the changes in L.A., 30 miles up from where he was, and the marriage life, and just focus on fastballs and sliders to hit. <laughs> but to be able to do both, as he will next year, I think that's crazy. And Again, Major League Baseball starting the season next year in Japan. They haven't announced who it is. But what a mistake it would be if it's not the Dodgers again. Yeah, there's more pressure on Dave Roberts than anybody else. No. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, thank you for joining us on short notice. And uh, it was a great watch. And uh, good luck with the uh, next game there, Ravi. Eduardo, thank you. Yes. That's uh, thank Carl, you. Carl Ravage, Eduardo Perez. Uh, 
the opening day on the mothership there as the Dodgers win at 5-2.